I'm Bill Holmes with KNO Games, and with me this afternoon is Nanette Lockwood, um, the Global Director of Policy and Advocacy for the Center of Energy Efficiency and Sustainability at Ingersoll Rand, and Kristen Graff, who is the Executive Director of Women in Renewable Industries and Sustainability, um, and uh, Kristen, the shorthand for that being RISE, and, and welcome to you both this afternoon. Thank you for, uh, for joining us for, uh, for a brief interview. And I wanted to start out by asking uh, you, Kristen, a little bit about what RISE does and what your role in the organization is and how that uh, sort of fits into the world of energy storage. Yeah, of course. So RISE is a national nonprofit. Um, we're focused on bringing more women into the renewable energy space, and that's both recruiting more women in in the first place, so working with K-12 programs and colleges and universities and a scholarship program, um, but also with the retention and advancement of all the amazing women that are already here in the sector. So we work both with individual women on their own career path, mentoring programs, leadership training, education, um, but also with companies that are really interested in doing some internal reflection and thinking about their own policies and programs and internal culture and how they can do a better job recruiting and retaining and advancing all the great women that are here. Uh, we as an organization sort of believe that it's a key important piece of getting a successful renewable energy and energy storage sector, sort of changing our entire energy future, relies on having all the most diverse minds, ideas, backgrounds, perspectives in the mix of everything that's happening. So our key piece of that puzzle is trying to get more women in the mix. Excellent. And one of the women who's in the mix in energy storage um, is Nanette, who uh, is extremely accomplished. I just saw uh, your presentation at lunchtime and uh, quite remarkable. And tell me a little bit about um, Ingersoll Rand's uh, thinking and your thinking about the, uh, the energy storage sector and, and, and where it's headed and, and uh, your, your experiences uh, in, in energy storage. Thank you, Bill. Ingersoll Rand is a diversified industrial company, so we own lots of different businesses that do different things. We make things, we also provide services, and many of these involve the energy sector. So we make air conditioning systems, we have control systems, we have some energy storage technologies that work with our air conditioning systems to literally shift demand. And we have uh, lots of different expertise within the company that really kind of targets energy storage as one of the areas where we see tremendous amounts of growth that are potential. And it falls into the natural portfolio of what we do. You know, we make buildings comfortable. And, you know, buildings have been a taker of electricity. That's really how they're designed initially. We've been trying to manage energy efficiency for years and years to reduce the amount of consumption of energy. Now we've found a way to really help manage the energy to make buildings more of a resource to the grid. So you can put generation in a building, you can put storage in a building, you could really kind of create a microgrid within a building. And so, you know, at Ingersoll Rand, we are incredibly sustainability focused. You know, we've got a climate commitment where we're reducing product emissions, we're reducing um, our facility emissions, and this kind of falls in line with exactly where they want to go. And we see a market transformation coming, and we want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And what, what are the elements of the market transformation that you see coming? Well, we've had a grid around for a long time that's been one direction. Right? So now it needs to really go both directions in order to be fully compatible with everything that is happening. And many of these areas in the country have been built to the point where the grid is strained already and to accommodate additional growth, you're gonna have to go to some sort of a microgrid or additional types of resources in order to truly fully develop that area. So it's, it's time to diversify our products our buildings, our grid, in order to really, you know, continue to expand and develop. And Christian, where do you see the, the role of, of women in leading that effort and, and uh, bringing in the innovation that's required to make that transition? Yeah, I think it's a critical part sort of, of having that diverse mix of people at the table. And we see more and more women across the energy space in general. Um, and as I think they're coming in, I think they're coming in because it's a really big, exciting challenge. There's a lot of exciting opportunities within it and they're bringing amazing skill sets. And so there's a role for women in all levels and all parts of the sector. And so 
Um, what I'm excited to see is how they're growing in, in sort of every different phase of that, whether it's working on manufacturing floors or, you know, taking a strong role in the C-suite or on a board of an energy company. And Annette, what's your thinking on that? How can uh, women lead the way and, and help with innovation and, and uh, do things with their careers that uh, will make a difference to uh, how this energy storage world uh, evolves? Well, I think I would say that, you know, I've seen a lot of women in the environmental sector in general. And so as the energy market turns into more of an environmental discussion, I'm starting to see a lot more women coming in. And you know, they're, they're at it for a big picture point of view oftentimes. And so that brings a whole new dynamic. You know, at, uh, at Train, you know, our brand that really handles all of our energy portfolio, we have many women uh, who are really experts in modeling and designing. And it's fascinating to watch the accomplishments and really, really progress into a way where we can actually solve some real world problems long term. You know, if you just try to solve the immediate technology problem, you know, that may or may not be the problem you're going to end up having 10, 20, 30 years from now. So we need some long-term horizon thinking to truly make this a transformational change that sticks. We need something that is going to be around 50 years from now. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what most excites you and, and sort of brings out your enthusiasm right now about energy storage generally or about RISE and the work that you're doing there? Yeah, I mean, I think for me in energy storage in particular, I think it's just the incredible growth at the moment and there are so many different companies that are changing and evolving and to me that's a really critical moment in time to do that reflection about how we are building the workforce that will meet the demands of the great big visions and excitement around the sector. And so as companies are growing and expanding, it's a really important moment for them to be thinking about how are we making sure we're getting all of these diverse folks in the mix. And so for me and our organization, Rise, to be able to be there and connect with all the women that are already here, but also talk with the companies that are like, okay, we're growing a lot. We want to hire people. How do we hire great women? How do we hire a really diverse workforce? Um, that's really exciting for us to be a part of. And you know, our background, we started as an organization in the wind energy industry, um, and over the last few years have grown our role in solar and more recently in energy storage, and that's because we've watched these companies sort of expand their scope across technologies, but also women have moved their own careers across technologies and have been present in all of these spaces. So it's really exciting to kind of take a model that we had in one and make it accessible to women that are, are facing a lot of the similar challenges and opportunities across a bunch of these sectors that are related. And Nanette, what kind of, uh, uh, when, you, when you look around at this conference and you we obviously just came from a lunch that was focused on women in energy storage. Um, but when you look around at the conference generally, what are, what are your thoughts about um, room for growth, uh, I suspect, in terms of the number of women who are participating in the industry, and how do we get from where we are today to where we need to be five or ten years from now? What's, what's the evolution going to look like um, in energy storage? Well, I see a tremendous amount of women in, in non-traditional roles taking an interest in energy storage, which I find is incredibly important because energy storage is not just about energy storage, right? This is about the infrastructure, the, the way we live. I mean, this is going to take a tremendous amount of diversity of thought, and that comes with diversity, right? More women are going to bring a different aspect of this. And I think that I'm starting to see more and more enter this space. And it's going to take a lot in order to solve our issues because this is a something that is a long-term objective. And we need to encourage more people that don't come from traditional engineering, utility type of roles in order to help us solve this. This is a policy issue. This is a behavior issue. This is a um, a framework that's been around for a long time and how we regulate utilities and how customers really go about buying power and manage their buildings and manage their behavior as far as, you know, do they plug in cars? Do they, you know, plug in their 15 different electrical devices for a week at a time? I mean, this is something that's going to take everybody to really resolve. And I think the more you have diversity, the better off it's going to be. Let me throw a question. This may be a little bit left field, but uh, 
The Energy Storage Association has a vision for 2025 mm -hmm. that talks about 35 gigawatts, yeah. 2025. What do you think about that? Is, is that too ambitious? Is that not ambitious enough? What, what's, your, uh, what's your sense of that? Well, I think that it is exactly right because it's, it's really coming across as people are asking that question. You know, there, there's not that much out there today. I mean, you know, for us, we have a gigawatt of thermal storage already deployed. And, a gigawatt? You know, a gigawatt wow. of um, thermal storage. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's so much potential for additional storage. You know, many states are going to have to change the way they do things. Many utilities are going to have to do it. But if you don't have an aspirational goal, you're never going to get there. So having a goal that really stretches you is incredibly important and I think you know we did it as a company we, we set a climate commitment we had no idea how we we're gonna get there but we figured it out and so now that this association which is you know Kelly is fantastic and I believe yeah. that she is gonna figure out a way to get us all in a room somehow and figure out how we're gonna get there and I think it's a great goal I think it's totally doable and I think it's gonna take a lot of people to figure it out but if we don't start with an end game we're never gonna get there right. yeah I, I would just say, I think we're seeing some amazing evolution in the electricity sector in general. You're talking about this in terms of utilities that are going to have to play differently, states that are going to have to play differently. And the more that changes and the more we move towards um, what I think a lot of people really want in the long run, which to me is a you know cleaner energy future overall and a more sort of accessible electricity system where they don't necessarily have to control all the weeds of it, but they can understand what they're getting and feel good about it overall. And you know, that it's affordable, but it's also clean and amazing and it's reliable. And that's what we have to offer. And storage just takes that to the next level. And so um, that is a win for renewables. It's a win for the electricity sector. And hopefully it's a win as we build an amazing workforce with great jobs and all this potential, um, not only for women, but for the whole sector. Good jobs and high-paying jobs as well. Exactly. So there's a lot. There's a lot to be said for that. Where do you see? Uh, where does Ingersoll Rand see uh, the energy storage being deployed um, in terms of? Is it something that goes into the built environment, as in a behind-the-meter storage system? Is it something that uh, connects to the grid, standalone storage? Perhaps it's combined with solar. Uh, maybe it's all of the above. But um, right. do you see like any particular area where? You know, that's, that's something that we really need to keep our eyes on. Well, we specialize in buildings mm -hmm. and technology around buildings. So for us, behind the meter is an incredible potential. I mean, think about how many buildings are already out there and all the renovations that go on in these buildings and all the energy challenges that they have. So for us, you know, we see a lot of behind the meter and it's multiple technologies. You know, it's not just thermal storage. We see a place for batteries. We see a place for solar. We, there's all kinds of technologies that you can use in a building to really help the grid. So for us, although we do recognize there's a lot of in front of the meter technologies that are gonna take place, certainly, for us, we feel like we can really contribute to behind the meter. Right, right. Kristen, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's happening all over. I think it's part of sort of an entire change in our energy system. And so, yes, definitely behind the meter, and I think it has to happen there and will continue. Um, you know, in our world, that's been a lot of wind and, and solar heavy. I think there's massive conversations happening around solar and storage and addressing time of use issues and things like that. So I think there's an incredible opportunity in that in that space and in all these different levels of where the opportunities are for, for energy storage as a whole. It's really exciting. And Nanette, how are you seeing people outside of Ingersoll Rand reacting to the idea of energy storage when you're working in the built environment with a building, um, are your counterparties, the people that you're dealing with, receptive to energy storage? Are they suspicious? Are they concerned? Or are they embracing it? I think it depends on who you're talking to. Very, everybody's very curious. You know, energy storage is the new sexy topic, right? <laughs> you know, how many states did we have actually discussing it last year? So a lot of people are really get, becoming more aware of it. They mm -hmm. always think it's going to be a wall of batteries. So, you know, I think it depends on who you're talking to, but they're very curious, you know, where are we going? They want to be a part of it because everybody wants to have control 
over their power bill and you know their buildings for the most part. And so they're very curious. They want to know more. More than that, they want to know that what they invest in is going to have value long term. So they're very careful on how they actually evaluate this, and they're very curious about how utilities are going to respond. Because you know, oftentimes building owners are not always comfortable, um, you know, changing the way they're operating their buildings and, and you know, sort of interacting with the utility for the first time, mm -hmm. right? Rather than just paying their bill. But they're curious. They want to do it. But I think we're going to have to start to see more framework where we can have incentives or some other pull for them to actually engage to make sure that they feel comfortable to do this. But it's already happening. You know, there are there are buildings all over New York City that are going through this right now. There's a power plant that's actually coming offline in 2020. They've had to reduce all kinds of demand. And so we're seeing energy storage being deployed all over Manhattan in order to avoid trying to upgrade that grid because that's incredibly expensive for them. And it's great. They're expanding their horizons. They're learning new things. They're, they're really rising to the challenge. And we find it really refreshing. And there are a lot of building owners out there that are waiting to hear about the story so they can get started. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thanks uh, for your support of the Energy Storage Association, and keep up the terrific work. Thanks. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us.